What's up guys? Welcome back. It is part two of the front wheel drive coilover into all wheel drive Volvo series, I guess. I don't know. It's a two part series. I didn't get the fronts or the rears done last time, so um, as you can see I've been out here all morning. I've been getting the rear shocks out. I've been getting the rear springs out. Um, it's kind of a nightmare, but uh, I figured now's a good time, now that I got everything out, uh, I can kind of show you what I went through to get it out and what you're going to go through to do the same and kind of what we're going to need off of the old car to put on the new stuff. So these are the rears, um, meant for front wheel drive, you know, Volvo 850, V70, whatever, um, not the Novomat, which comes with the all wheel drive cars. So. You don't get the little ear in the bottom where it's supposed to mount. So what we have to do is pull the old shocks. So as you can see, the stock self-leveling suspension has this little ear on it. Um, we need that for these. So we got these out. We're going to go ahead and cut this so we can pop this out and then throw it in here and then everything else should bolt up. Um, the uppers are the same size. They're just a little longer, so we're gonna play with the spacer a little bit. Probably use the stock hardware from the Nouveau mat on top and uh, get it to sit up in there. So the rear shock shouldn't be a problem. Um, it's just really that part that you gotta worry about because it needs this to mount to the lower control arm. As far as the springs go, I went ahead and got this one out of the car, which the best way I found to do it, I disconnected the sway bar from both sides. I loosened up this, uh, whatever the hell it's called, rear trailing arm uh, from the front just so that it could move a little bit. And then in here, I disconnected the uh, knuckle from the lower control arm so that you can move the lower control arm on its own. And then I was able to pry out the spring. The spring's pretty good size, but it's really not all that stiff because it relies on the stock shocks to adjust where the car sits. The springs are really just there to take some of that initial bump force. The, the shocks are what controls really your ride height and everything. So we're going to be switching over to these. These are what came with the kit. Um, these are just the little lowering springs. Um, you've got your adjustable coilover perch. And then you've got your, uh, I think on the other cars, it's this is supposed to be the upper perch, but we're going to be using as the lower, so that's going to go down here, and then this is going to go up here, and so when you take your stock spring out, this big thing is going to fall out with it, this bump stop casing, um, and there's a little hole in it, which up on the... Um, yeah, there we go. Up on the subframe, you've got that little nub, which actually happens to fit this thing perfectly. So that's just going to stay there. And then for the lower, you can see it's just a kind of a blank plate. So we got to we got to drill a hole so that. The hardware that comes with the kit, which has a washer, which fits this inner diameter, which sits on this lip, and then there's a 7 16 bolts that go through it. So we gotta drill a 7 16 hole through here to pinch all this together, and then the spring goes in the middle, and that's, that's that. So my next step, I think, is gonna be to drill this hole and get the spring in place, and then we'll worry about the shocks. Uh, I'm going to try to get one whole side done, just so I can kind of show you guys the process, and then I'll probably just get the other side done in like a time lapse or something. So let's get to it.
eh, it's a little big, but it'll be fine. That's pretty much it. So this thing down here that I just drilled through, I would say is probably three eighths of an inch thick. So just keep that in mind. All I used was an eighth inch pilot, and then I switched to this uh, 7 16th, or sorry, that is a half inch step bit, which I got at Harbor Freight. So even if it only works once, perfect. It was like five bucks, so. Um, that's that side done, so now, you can see what I was talking about. We're gonna put this here, and then this washer that came with the kit goes inside it, and then that goes through, and then we just put a nut on the bottom. I'll put a washer with a lock washer, but basic idea. So that'll be nice and tight. Um, spring will sit on here, upper perch, with adjustability will sit up there. And um, that's pretty much it for the rear spring install. So I'm gonna go ahead and button this up and uh, we'll get onto the shock. All right. So, we've got our lower perch in and mounted. And let's see, okay. So, now we're going to take our spring and get it in there, get that in there. Ah, there it is. Whew! Okay. So we now have an adjustable height spring in the back of our uh, all-wheel drive. Um, so down here, the spring's not sitting totally flat. There's like quite a gap. Uh, that'll all go away once this lower control arm comes back up into place. It's sitting about four inches lower than it is supposed to be right now. So once we get that back into place, that little gap will disappear, and we shouldn't have to worry about losing our spring if we articulate it wrong or whatever. But uh, I've got it set on the lowest setting for now. Um, I'm going to get everything together and kind of put the wheels on and see where that sits, and we'll adjust it from there. So uh, let's move on to the shocks. So we need to keep cutting through because I only need this little core. Um, as you can tell on this, I need just just that part of it. So uh, we're going to keep cutting the rest of this bushing off, but at least it's a start. Alright, I've been going at these root shocks for about an hour now. Um, <laughs> first one's always trial and error until you know exactly what you're trying to get. So there's the little sleeve. Um, what I didn't think about is the fact that on these shocks, ugh, so there's the empty hole in the Nouveau mat, and then in between that is a rubber bushing with steel case which is like vulcanized to well to this piece so that was all attached there and then this was in the middle of that so the first one I didn't want to cut originally too deep just because I didn't know if we were using this like because this was like this I didn't know if we were using that diameter or if it needed to be smaller so if you look at the new shock, that diameter was too big and it wasn't going to fit. 
So I ended up having to cut through this one too just to get that piece out and now that slides in there. Now it's a little loose so we are going to have to find something to go around this before we put it in. It should be a snug fit. If it's not, whenever you hit a bump you're just going to hear that and it's not going to work properly so <clears throat> we got to find something some kind of rubber. I'm thinking I'll go like to Home Depot or something and get a piece of like hose just enough to like be able to hammer this in there and have it be tight. It's really close um, but not exactly perfect so that's what we need um, out of the rear shocks so I've got one more to do now that I know that when I cut through I'll cut all the way down to here on both sides and then this thing should just hammer right out and this thing that was all vulcanized to the other stuff should stay in place because there's no rubber between this and this it's just like a I think they like press fit it from the factory but um, once you open up a little gap in it especially if I cut it from both sides <clears throat> it should be able to just fall right out and then we'll get that We'll find something to go on there, get it put in the shock, and then we can get it mounted, and then I have a whole other side to do. Sweet! <laughs> so, I'm going to keep going on that. I'll be back in a little bit once I have both of these in my hand and we can figure out what to use for a spacer, like a, a piece of rubber between here and there. Um, and the rest of the install should go pretty quick, so... <sighs> I'll be back. Many hours later. Alright guys, it's getting kind of late. So, what I decided to do with this thing, remember we were talking about that bushing for here? Um, I didn't have a chance to go anywhere, get anything for it, so for now, we're just going to roll it in some more electrical tape. It's not that big of a gap that it needs to take up, so I did it on the other side. It seems fine. It's definitely not a permanent solution, but I need to get this thing back on the road tonight because it's supposed to rain the next five days. So we're going to go ahead and just do that and I'm going to power through and get this other side done. Alright, so we've got a nice tight fit. Again, electrical tape's not a permanent solution, but it'll get us on the road for now until I can find some actual bushings to go in there. So just another quick thing with the shocks that you're going to want to save is these upper uh, shock mounts. Um, pretty much just need to pry that piece off, but we're going to reuse that for the shocks that they gave us. Um, that way we can like cup between the area that is in the floor for the shocks, which is, that's Nouveau mat stuff, and that's how they decided to do it. So we've got the upper there, and then we'll need the lower, and it kind of just cones itself together. Um, kind of like that, so. Go ahead and pull that off. Okay. <laughs> Y'all, it is really hot out here, like, I, it's not real hot. Hang on. I feel like I'm so gross right now. Alright, it's 82 where I'm at, but I just... Uh, I want to see the humidity because... Okay. <laughs> yeah. So the humidity... Sixty-nine percent. Which is why I feel like a disgusting person. And why I probably look like it. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> anyway. So we got the uh, spring out on the other side. I just kind of wanted to show you guys my method of doing it. Um, since there's really no room in here to fit like spring compressors. And the bottom is, it's not open so you can't fit those inside out spring compressors. So what I do is I take this long mama jama out which connects the uh, lower control arm to the knuckle and then that gives this the chance to swing down and a series of pry bars like 
down in here to pop the spring up and then it'll pop out and once it's sitting on top of this you can just kind of whack it from the other side with a hammer and it'll come out this hole. Um, it's not under a ton of tension so don't be super nervous about it but just be safe. Um, so we got this side spring in, this side shock is ready to go in. Um, I'm going to bolt the control arm back up to the hub and then all we got to do is basically slide the whole shock assembly up. Um, you can see the bracket right here that has the two studs that go down through that picks up these ears right here and then there's the hardware for it and then it's just uh, this goes on the bottom side pull this stuff off other one goes on that side and we should be done um, I disconnected my sway bar it's probably a good idea too um, it just gives it that little bit more of articulation All right, y'all, it's hella dark out now. Still struggle bus on this side. So, <laughs> I think uh, I'm gonna try to get in the best I can and leave it. And uh, try to get up early tomorrow and knock it out. I'm just getting eaten alive by mosquitoes out here. It's pretty unpleasant, so. Um, I will pick this up later. I will finish this video so that you guys can get everything you need in order to put these in. You can see, kinda, that I'm ready to put the shock in. There's not a whole lot to see. Pretty much just push it straight up through that hole. Make sure it lines up with that hole. But I'll try and show you guys that tomorrow when I get to it. I gotta call it for tonight. <laughs> we'll see you then. So, <laughs> it's been a little while. Uh, as you can see, it's not really all that warm out anymore. Um, just thought I'd give you guys an update. Uh, I ended up losing the footage of me installing the rear uppers like I was going to show you. Um, so, that's all gone, but pretty much what I covered with things where it ended before I came back out here was pretty much all you need to know. Uh, the shock just goes up into the body of the car, bolts in from the top, bolts in from the bottom. Um, if you can't figure that part out, you probably shouldn't be going after this project. But, um, I, that being said, if there is any questions that you guys have, hit me up either on here or on Instagram. Um, I try to answer everybody's questions that I can. Uh, as far as that goes, uh, that pretty much buttoned up the install. Um, there really wasn't anything else that kind of threw me for a loop or anything. Everything kind of just went in nice. As far as how it rides, uh, it's okay. It's it's about what I expected for what I paid for everything. But, uh, you know, it gets low. It looks good. Um, it's just a little rough for a daily. But uh, that's ex kind of expected. So, that being said, um, that's about the end of it uh again like i said if there's anything you guys need to know or questions or whatever hit me up i'll do the best i can to answer it it's been a couple months now um of just driving these on the daily and uh what i can say is the rear springs that come with this kit are not fantastic uh i've seen a lot of people that have also run this kit that have had issues with the rear springs they kind of just after a while they collapse on themselves a bit so the rear ride quality gets worse and worse as time goes on um, I would say your best bet is if you're looking into these coilovers is to go ahead and order some like eye box springs in the same dimensions maybe a little bit stiffer uh, 
and put those in instead it might save you some headache in the long run um, other than that I really can't complain though for for the price I paid and how well everything went together the rears being kind of their own little issue but that's just because it's an all-wheel drive car and uh, nothing's really made for these so kind of got to make do with what you got um, but yeah, that's going to go ahead and wrap things up. I appreciate you guys hanging in there. Uh, I'm sorry this video took so long to get out. Um, I can do more videos on the wagon if it's something that you are all interested in. But expect more of the sedan, which is in the garage right now, uh, undergoing its little winter transformation. Um, I'll have more of that later on. I've got another video that I'm working on right now on that that'll be out soon. Uh, so yeah, thanks for hanging in there. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and let me know what else you guys want to see. So we'll catch you on the next one. Bye.